Hey ladies, it's Valerie. Um, I look really crazy in this video. I don't, sorry, I don't know what has happened, but um, maybe it's the lighting. I feel like I look like I just tried to put fake tanner all over my face. I swear I don't look like this in the mirror. It's weird. Anyway, um, <laughs> all of that aside, I wanted to come on and do a video. I'm during my lunch break, obviously, since I'm in my car. Um, I just didn't want to wait to do this because I wanted to talk. So um, I had my progesterone levels drawn my 7 DPO uh, levels drawn last Friday that I came to you and told you about um, those results are ready I called the quest labs this morning but they won't actually give me um, the number that has to come from my doctor's office and I have not heard from them yet so they told me that it is ready that the doctor has it but they haven't contacted me yet so that kind of stinks um, I'm almost hoping that they interrupt this video to call um, because I'm on my lunch break and I could actually answer um, not, not thinking it's going to happen, but, um, it's nine days past ovulation right now. Um, this weekend, and I will, I'm going to go ahead and break my rule. I'm going to talk a little bit about symptoms. Um, I'm not having anything major. Um, as you guys know, Thanksgiving was the day that my, I got my first positive ovulation, uh, test. Then I got my second one on the day after, um, with the metformin, I've had a pretty, you know, decent diet. So with all the Thanksgiving food, you know, my tummy's been a little bit more rumbly. I've had a little bit more, um, you know, just like that gassy stomach feeling. Um, and so again, I'm kind of chalking all that up to kind of the weird food that I'm not normally eating. Um, however, on Saturday morning, I woke up. I had a really bad headache. Um, I felt awful just completely awful not sick like I was sick with a cold or anything but just like um I, I've been experiencing some cramping um not necessarily cramps but just I'm feeling something cramps down kind of there um I don't know I felt a little bit nauseated not like I felt like I was gonna go throw up or anything but I just felt off all morning so that subsided around I don't know maybe one or so that day um, and since then I felt fine I don't have any tender breasts or anything like that still um, which again with my previous pregnancy that ended in miscarriage I did not ever experience the tender breasts or uh, any sort of morning sickness or anything um, hormonally or, you know, according to my HCG levels, I mean, they were great. My pr pregnancy was progressing just fine. Um, but I wasn't experiencing any of that. Uh, and I did end up with, you know, again, a blighted open pregnancy. So that would be why, because my, um, the embryo was not, you know, fueling itself. It wasn't feeding, you know, um, like it should have been. So that I think would kind of explain why maybe I didn't develop any more of those symptoms. Um, but again, I know that so many people say that like sore boobs and stuff are like a really, really common early pregnancy sign. Being that I don't have those, again, of course, I'm kind of feeling a little bit more on the negative side thinking, okay, well, since I'm not feeling those, maybe I'm not. Um, but again, it kind of goes along with, well, when I was pregnant before, I didn't. So maybe I just wouldn't um, experience that until maybe a little bit later. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking into it way too much, as you can tell. Um, especially for when I said I was going to try not to. Um, but again, I'm kind of getting to that point in my two-week wait where it's like I really, really, really want to test. I know that it's probably too early. My luteal phase is about 15 to 16 days long. I would really, really like to not test until um, this Saturday, which would be, um, I think, 14. Let's see. Sorry. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's 9 to yeah, so that'd be 14 um, DPO, and I would feel very comfortable um, with whatever result that I would get at that point, although I know that there are women who have taken um, pregnancy tests, and they haven't come out um, until a little bit later. So I believe that AF is expected, uh, based on my previous cycles, um, to come around next, maybe Monday or Tuesday. Um, that would be cycle days 33 and 34, I think, um, which is, again, a little bit more earlier for me, but I did ovulate earlier this month with the Clomid. So, um, that's kind of where I am. It's just been one of those things today that, um, I just can't get my mind off of it. I want it to be a BFP so, so bad. Um, I've been so hopeful this whole cycle and I'm going to be, I'm not going to lie. Like I'm going to be upset if it's not, um, I'm upset anyway when it's not. So it's not like it makes much of a difference, but, um, 
I, I don't know. I, I'm still very hopeful, you guys. I want to say, you know, yeah, this is still it. Um, I'm feeling like it's it. I have been feeling, again, some cramping down there. I mean, pretty consistently and some lower backache um, every once in a while. So, again, there are signs that I feel like, oh, maybe this is it. But, again, you guys know how this goes. Um, but I just know that the things that I've been feeling are not in my head and they're too early to be AF cramping because I started to feel, um, I felt a really, really like tight twinge on Friday, which would have been around six or seven DPO. And then, um, yeah, so it's just, again, I've been feeling these things, um, around, you know, day six or seven, eight, nine, um, that are too early to be AF related. Um, I just don't know what they are. They might be nothing. Um, I know Renee last cycle said that she experienced some things like that. Um, really strongly believe that it was implantation. And then she ended up getting her BFN. So again, I don't know if maybe that's what I'm experiencing. Um, maybe something's trying to implant. Um, and I, it's going to be just a matter of time before the HCG starts building. And it would show up on a pregnancy test. Or maybe it would fail and not implant. And then I would just have my regular AF. So, um... Oh, you guys, um, this is going to be a tough week. I'm trying to, to focus my energies on other things, but y'all know how this goes. It's so hard. Um, so please, any words of wisdom, encouragement, any ideas that you guys do during your two-week wait um, to take your mind off of it, please let me know. I'm trying to work really hard. I'm trying to focus, but it's just not happening. Um, uh, and again, I'm at that point where I just want to know either way. Um, I know we get so impatient. Uh, I just want to know either way. I want to know yes or I want to know no and move on to the next. Um, so that's really it. Uh, I feel like I'm just rambling. Oh, oh, okay. So I had written down a couple notes and it's getting a little bit long video, but, um, I do have a fear of another miscarriage. I'm really, if you know, no matter when we get pregnant again, I don't know when I want to tell people. Um, I will tell you guys. Um, but as far as telling my real life people, I don't want to tell anybody until like the baby's here, you know what I mean? Because I just have seen too much of late, um, late pregnancy loss. Um, I've experienced early pregnancy loss myself. Um, I've heard of too many stories of people losing around 23 and 24 weeks. You know, I just, I, I know what this miscarriage has done to me this year and I am so afraid of that happening again. I know that there are women out there who go through, you know, too many, I mean, one miscarriage is too many. But they go through just miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. And honestly, I told my husband the other night, I was like, I don't think I could do it. I was like, I don't, I don't think I could do it again. Um, I pray that that's not what will happen with us. Um, but it's a very real thing and it's, it's definitely scary for me. Um, I'm going in with this, you know, just praying um, that everything would be perfectly developed and perfectly, you know, just a smooth pregnancy. But again, that fear is there. Um... And the other thing I guess I'll talk about in a video, I'll try to do another one either later tonight or tomorrow, but it's about people getting pregnant. And I mean, I guess I can talk a little bit about it here, but it's about people getting pregnant and not telling you because they know that you're going through something, even though they don't really know what you're going through. Um, I've had people who've gotten pregnant who don't really know that we're experiencing infertility. They just know about my miscarriage. And for some reason, they feel like that that is a good enough reason not to tell me that they have successfully gotten pregnant. And um, that's really hurtful because I guess that they think I'm either too selfish and I won't be happy for them or that it's going to hurt me or whatever the case may be. But I just feel like I'm the one going through this. Uh, I'm the one dealing with this every single day. You are the one who was able to successfully get pregnant. So I know it's going to be uncomfortable for you. It might be awkward to talk to me about it. But who's the one, you know, can you spare yourself a few moments of awkwardness to at least kind of break it to me sensitively. And maybe I'm asking way too much, but this has happened um, a couple of times to me in the past year now, and uh, it's really hurtful. So um, if you're in that boat and you get pregnant, and the same thing for me, when I get pregnant, um, I'm gonna be very sensitive because I've been through this, but I'm also going to keep in mind my friends who are um, experiencing this and, I, and, and to know that it will be difficult for all the parties involved. So I'm going to cut this video off so I can post it. Um, I will post another video about that later because it is something that's really important to me. So thanks ladies. Send lots of encouragement. Hopefully we'll have some good news in the next few days. All right. Bye.